Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have found a winner. These are the hardest irons I've ever attempted to hit. Welcome back to a brand new video. Simon Dan here, Burford Golf Lab. I picked these up on the weekend with the wife. In that video, if you saw it, £100 for these. A Cleveland Highball driver, which, a bit of nostalgia, was my first ever driver. And a steel three wood and a bag for £100 all in. But today's story is, whatever happened to the old school blade? And if you want to be slightly sadistic and punish yourself and have these irons in your own possession, then all you got to do is leave this video a like, comment why you want to punish yourself that badly, and then subscribe if you're new. So Simon, what are you talking about? Well, this is today's modern version of a blade. Mizuno is probably one of the main leading blade makers, if you could say that, as it is basically a lump of metal and has rarely changed from year to year. That being said, as soon as you put it up against something that is slightly older, we're talking about 15 to 20 years or so, all of a sudden you see that weighting, tungsten at the back and the Mizuno, much heavier as a head in general, against this Titleist 695 head, well, this feels almost like a cavity back. So yes, over the years, manufacturers have slowly de-lofted even their blades and made them slightly bigger, chunkier, and more weighted however it's for a good reason these are incredibly tough to hit arguably the hardest blades i've ever had to hit mainly because how light they are how unforgiving they are and how high lofted they are standard blade today is lofted at about 34 degrees whether it's tailor-made callaway mizuno whatever whereas back in the day they were about 37 which is probably close to a lot of your nine irons potentially even especially the more expensive more long distance like the callaway epic irons for example you're verging on a pitching wedge and as, as I said at the start, why punish yourself in this game? Why make it harder for yourself? Back in the day, you used to get three to pitch and wedge. Now you only get pitch and wedge up to about five iron. Even then, I'm very rarely fitting, especially in the slower head swing speeds, I should say, very rarely am I even fitting for five iron as five hybrids and seven woods are just gonna be more beneficial. And even on tour, Combo sets are a big thing and easily available if you go for a fitting. You could have these pitch and wedge, nine iron, eight iron. That controlled shot, that high flight, spin, whatever you like to call it. But as soon as you go seven, six, five, four, three, you're gonna need some more weight behind it because we're not perfect, this game's not perfect, and you're gonna miss the middle every now and again. And I easily showed that throughout the making of this video. I hit all of these clubs, pitch and wedge, three iron. And I did not struggle when I hit the pitch and wedge. I did not struggle with the nine, the eight, seven. It started sloping off a bit. Six iron, I looked over it. My knees started trembling because I was thinking, don't miss the club face. Five, four, and three. I was just lucky to even hit it because when you hit these things out the middle, like any blade, any golf club for that matter, it feels great. The ball goes exactly where you want it to go with a nice amount of height and a nice amount of spin, so on and so forth. However, golf is not all about your good shot. My main lesson when I'm teaching someone is how good is your bad shot? And if your bad shot is too destructive, it means that your score is gonna be impacted. And that's why over the years, the bravado of having to play a blade Having to have one of these in the bag to be a statement, to show that you are a good player has basically been lost and you can see that on tour. You don't see the blades that often. And if you do, they're normally in the lower end of the bag because even the best in the world understand the importance of forgiveness and confidence. Being confident over an iron makes a huge amount of sense. 
If you're imagining the ball going and landing on the green, finishing next to the flag when you're standing over your iron, it's more than likely going to do so. So at this point, you're probably saying, Simon, you wasted your money. Why did you even bother buying these? Well, this is 60 pounds worth and a good looking 60 pounds worth of irons that are basically going to help you throughout your winter training. Whether you're off 20 or you're off 4, if you go back and hit some S300 blades, whatever they might be, and they came in multi-compound grips as well, by the end of the winter, 200 balls a week of hitting these down at your local range, you're gonna be striking it better. You're gonna find the middle of the club face better. Your confidence when you go back to the irons that you already have, your cavity back, your muscle back, whatever it might be, you're gonna feel a lot more confident with those after training, cutting your teeth, sweat, blood and tears with these bad boys. It makes a lot of sense to practice with blades because it makes the game harder, the heads are smaller, it makes you focus more on finding the middle of the club face because when you don't find the middle of the club face you're gonna get punished the big thing with cavity back irons they're brilliant they're fantastic and it makes the game a lot more accessible for a larger majority of the public however you can hit out the toe you can hit out the heel and therefore you're compromising your swing mechanics on finding the center of the club face you're not gonna lose that with these well, basically, the whole head is one big sweet spot because there's not much head there in the first place. But if you can shape, if you can hit an iron of this caliber, something that's this small, this light, unforgiving, no tungsten weights, just forged metal, your game's going to be on the right way up by the end of the winter. Not even to mention, once you're finished with them, you could probably sell them back for the same amount of money. I think I could get £100 for these quite comfortably. And potentially you could put these in the bag. Don't go and play a competition with them. But again, get on the golf course. There's nothing like hitting balls off grass, especially with blades. Again, there's no bounce. There's no forgiveness. These are knives. And if you can play half a game with these bad boys, again, it's going to make the game so much easier when you go back to the irons that you're so confident, comfortable, and basically, on an average, going to play better golf with. So guys, there you have it. The hardest blades I've ever tried to hit. However, they might not be great for your bag, but they could be great for your practice routine. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like. Subscribe if you're new. Catch you guys later.